what I'm doing here is, I guess I'm proving the maximum likelihood estimates for the mean mu and the variance sigma square. <laughs> Considering a normal distribution. I'm laughing because the sigma, I put the square outside of the parentheses, should be inside the parentheses, but it's okay. So what I'm doing here is writing the probability density function this is basically the probability dense this is basically the probability distribution function for a, a continuous random variable I have other videos where I prove that so we're going to let theta 1 equal to mu the mean mu and theta 2 equals sigma squared, which is the variance. The MLE, maximum likelihood estimate, of the mean is mu equals, in this case, this is a capital sigma, sigma x over n, which is just basically how you calculate the mean. You always sum up all values and divide by the number of items. And for the variance, I probably should have x sub i, right? Because it, so this sigma, the funny looking squiggly thing, should be from i equals 1 to n, n being the, sam the population size. It's x minus, so it should be x sub i for all the possible values minus mu squared. Mu is the population mean. So those are our estimates. We have to prove that they are the maximum likelihood estimates for the mean and the variance. Let's write up the likelihood function. So that's the probability of the observed data given these unknown parameters. The unknown parameters are mu and sigma squared. Even though we're assuming that the data are normally, or we're considering a normal distribution, and that that symbol that you may not recognize is a product symbol. So we're saying we're multiplying from i equals one to n, where there's n values in the population, and we're multiplying them. So the the f of x theta one theta two is the probability density function. It's a density function because we're dealing with a, a normal distribution. Density functions are related to to continuous variables rather than categorical or discrete variables. So here I'm putting that we need a product. Now you'll notice that I also rewrote these initial terms. Like I had the square root of 2 pi so the square root of 2 pi in the denominator is 2 pi to the negative 1 half. It's negative because it's in the denominator. It's 1 half because it's the square root. And this theta 2, although I have theta down, I think I have to fix it, right? Hopefully I will fix it. It's theta, it should be theta 2 to the minus 1 half. So you see that earlier I said theta 1 is equal to mu and theta 2 is equal to sigma square. So if we look at the, the equation for the normal distribution, the denominator, you have 1 divided by square root of 2 pi sigma. Because it's sigma and theta 1 is sigma squared, we take the square root of sigma 1. Except right above what I'm writing right now. I finally put that 2 over this. I like commenting on myself. I'm looking. This is like a football game where you're commenting on your performance. There you go. So this is the likelihood function. 
Well, since we have a product and we have all these powers or exponents, we're going to do a little summing, right? So that's n, well, we're multiplying it n times. For every time we do it, it's one time, so times n. For the first two terms and this last term here, well, we're going to we have this exponent, we're just going to sum it. If you don't know what, why I did that, I would suggest you watch a video showing you why you would do that. Sorry that I'm kind of cut out here, but I just want to make sure you could see all the equations. And we're taking the log of the likelihood because taking the log makes our lives easier when we're differentiating. When we're taking derivatives, and we need the derivative in order to determine the maximum and minimum. The, min the derivative of any function is the slope. When we set the derivative equal to zero, we get the, a minimum or a maximum. So that's what we're doing now. But you'll see that we're, when we, once we take the log, we're dealing with sums rather than products. So addition and subtraction rather than multiplication. This makes our lives way easier. Okay. Now, we need to start taking derivatives. So we take the first derivative of this log likelihood, given those two parameters, mean and standard deviation, I mean and variance, excuse me, with respect to the first element, which is the mean, theta 1. Well, this first term has nothing, the second term has nothing, so they're just equal to 0. The third term, though, has the theta 1 in it. So we're going to take its derivative. So it's going to be one, minus 1, right? So minus 1 theta 1. It's going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then the negative 1. So you'll see this is. It's actually quite beautiful. So we, we we get two divided by two theta two. So those two cross those twos cross out, and we get the following. Beautiful, huh? So we want to solve for theta 1, right? Let me erase to make some space here. Erase makes space. Erase and space rhyme. I like that. There you go. So when I sum, I get the sum, so I'm distributing the sum, so it's sum of x minus the sum of theta 1. Well, the sum of theta 1 is just n times theta 1, because the sum is from 1 to n, so that's why I get n times theta 1, and divided by theta 2. If I multiply across, if I multiply by both sides by theta 2, the left side will be sigma x minus n theta 1, the right side is 0, because theta, one times, theta 2 times 0 is 0, so I'm left with this right here, and I just need to solve for theta 1. Yeah, theta 1 is equal to sigma x, the sum of the x's divided by n, and that's equal to the mean. Yes, I got what I wanted. It's a maximum likelihood estimate. That's what I said it would be, and it is. There we go. What a smiley face. What a beauty. 
very happy. It's as if I took my sunshine pills and I, I, I did this. It's great. There you go. If you don't know what sunshine pills are, those are my happy pills. If you read my textbooks and my just anything that I ever do, I always talk about sunshine pills. Beautiful, huh? So next step is to find the maximum likelihood estimate of the variance. Here I am. So I take this log likelihood, so we can take the derivative of the log likelihood, but this time we're going to take the derivative with respect to theta 2, which is our, our variance, right? Just rewrite it here. Piper loves this. Piper's my parrot, if you don't know that. And he loves this. He, he's a really big math, math freak. So again, I should probably have x sub i because that's the individual values, but you know, please forgive me there. So here's my log value, my log likelihood value. We need to take the derivative of this with respect to theta 2. By the way, to determine that their maximum likelihood, the second derivative has to be negative. And in both cases they are, and I'm sorry that I didn't do it here, but you can do it yourself. And you'd find that they are negative. So this is the Oh, this is the derivative of a log function, right? So it's derivative of the log of, is that 2 pi, right? Right. Well, the, so the second derivative is respect to theta 2, so that first term is zero. So the second term n over two over log two pi, oh, excuse me, log pi, uh, log theta two is going to be n over two times one over theta two. That's why we got this n over two theta two. The second term though, I'm going to rearrange it a little bit to make it a little easier. Instead of theta 2 in the denominator, I have theta 2 to the negative 1. So I move it up to the numerator. To move it up to the numerator, I have to have a negative 1 exponent because it's not in the denominator anymore. I'm moving to the numerator, right? Hmm. I like the way I'm thinking here. Yes, yes. Oh, look at that. There you go. This negative one moves forward, Oop, makes it a positive. Never rush when you do math, think. There you go. There you go. Okay, good. Theta to the negative 2 means that's going to drop to the denominator and be a theta square in the denominator. Two theta squared. There you go. Great. Wait. See, I didn't like that. There you go. That's perfect. I love doing these proofs because you have to 
think through them and see what, what the final outcome will be. So we have, look, notice that we have these two theta twos in the denominator, one is squared and one is not, so, but we want to solve for theta two, so what should I do? Hmm, think about it. Hmm. What if I multiplied both of these last terms by theta two squared? Would that work? I wonder, let me think, let me think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. By the way, I like my hat. That's um, from Arapaho Basin in Colorado. It's beautiful. If you were balding like me, you'd wear hats too. Make sure everything works. Yep, 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 yep. So, okay, ah. What if I multiply this by, wait, wait, wait for it, by 2 theta 2 squared? Yep. Yeah. What would happen then? Let's think about it. Hmm. So we'd cancel that out. We wouldn't cancel that totally because you'd have a theta 2 in the numerator, but this part would cancel out for sure. Let's wait on the, let's hold off on the zero. Okay, check that out. I don't need that, right? No. No, I just cancel that out, right? Look. The 2 theta 2 squared cancels out the denominator of that second term. What we have left is, let's see, n theta 2. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I forgot the negative sign. There you go. So that equal to zero would be good. There you go. So remember the, the the derivative set to zero. First derivative is the slope for a maximum or a minimum. So it just tells you whether we have a maximum or a minimum. And what do we have? Look at this. This is beautiful. We're setting. We're solving for theta two. And we're actually almost done here. Squared over n. So the last thing we need is to substitute back substitute theta two and theta one, right? But I'm running out of room. There you go. Theta two equals sigma squared, which equals Summation of x, it should be xi again, minus the mean, or theta 1, divided by n. And that, my friends, is the maximum likelihood estimate of the population variance. Isn't that beautiful? Then we can also find the... Wow, this is beautiful. Wow. You got it.